Hey guys, welcome back. This is Mike from EE Tech Reviews, and we got a fantastic new upgrade to the original Soundcore Life Q30s. Today, we have the Q35s. And we're gonna do a quick unboxing, kind of go over its new features, look over the instruction manual, kind of go into how the codec situation's working with all this high-res audio that we're talking about, and then get into the comparisons between the old headphones and give it an engineer score. So nevertheless, let's take a look. Let's open up the box. Beautiful packaging. They did a great job. The box is about the same size, slightly larger than original. The weight of the headphones is just about the same as well. But first off, a very nice case. Feels very nice premium materials compared to the originals. It's a little smaller too, which is also nice. The instructions, I want you to pause to read them. It's important to see them if you want to get an idea of how the controls really work. But other than that, I'm just going to quickly blow through these. If you want to pair two devices, which is new, you just press the power button twice and it lets you connect to two devices. Transparency, put your right hand on the right ear cup, hold it for about one to two seconds and boom. I wish it was a little quicker. I think it's around two seconds, second and a half. But other than that, it's very nice. Now we also get some accessories that come in, in this box here. Very nice to see is a three and a half millimeter aux cable with a mic attached. The mic's a little extra, that was not there originally. USB-C, great to see they kept that. And the plane adapter, good if you're actually going around traveling. Now something that immediately struck me when is when I looked at this, I noticed that there's no pocket where you could put your cables. So you're gonna have to stuff them in the empty space between the headphone ear cups when you have it all twisted up inside the case. Now first impressions with these, they look beautiful, they feel very nice. The padding is actually, I think, improved. You can see extra stitching as you go around the actual inner lining of the cups there. That's nice. The feel's about exactly the same as the Life Q30s. The fit was already nice. I think the matte blue color looks fantastic with that shiny headband on top. Their adjustments, very, very micro-like adjustments and they actually are pretty good and they don't move around too much. Even if you move your head, they're not gonna auto uh, unsnap there. And yeah, that's the Life Q35s. It's a quick unboxing. All right, guys, let's do a quick review of what the differences are between them. It's important to know if you're going to spend the extra $50 to get the upgraded versions, if you really want the Q35s versus the Q30s here. So Q35s, 50 bucks more. Everything else is the same from a generic standpoint here. Battery life, playback time, Bluetooth type, USB-C, 40 millimeter drivers are the same. The EQ on the app's the same. They auto pair to your device within three to five seconds. That's the same. Both have two mics. Both have the same good, great quality A and C for relatively lower priced headphones here. Build quality is the same. I think the matte color on this blue looks actually a lot better than the original Q30s. NFC pairing is good if you have Android. High res audio is correct for wired mode on both of them. They're both capable of playing for wireless and this is the biggest difference for the audio files where if you want to spend the extra money a hundred percent do it that's your use case you want to have the premium quality best file quality best audio I want to hear everything you can pay the 50 bucks you get ldac which on android is very very easy we'll get into how the codecs work if you don't have an android for ios but basically you go into your developer settings on android and you click ldac once you're paired to these headphones i've tried it out if you can hear the differences, then it's worth it. If not, I wouldn't spend the extra 50 bucks. Ear padding. I've shown some pictures of these earlier, and I think it's definitely something important to notice. But if you look, there's a little bit more stitching here around the edges of these ear cups compared to the originals here. And that actually produces a better fit. I think it's firmer, but it feels comfortable and it provides, personally, I think a better seal. And there's less room for it to kind of move around as you're having a cup to your ear. I think it's a slightly more firm than the originals, but very, very close in terms of clamping. What else we got? AI noise reduction. As you listened, or you will listen, you have very, very clear audio quality. They also have that AI noise reduction, specifically on the newer ones. And you also hear, though, as the environment that you're in goes up in noise level, the quality of your audio mic actually drops. So if you're in a quiet room, there's no big issues. It's gonna sound great, as you'll hear. The proximity sensor on here, I think is a great premium feature. It's something I really liked on the Sony XM4s. 
Is it perfect? I'm not gonna say yes, not a, every second that I take this off, it, it perfectly pauses, but I say it, it, it works relatively well and I actually really like it. And I think it's a great addition. Two devices, you can connect the two at the same time and you can switch between them nicely. The aux cord for the three and a half millimeter on this actually includes a mic on the cable, which you won't actually have on the other ones. So that, that's a nice addition there, I really like that. And the case size, the case is a little bit smaller. Let me grab them real quick. Q30 case, Q35, slightly smaller. The quality of the actual material in here is a lot nicer, smoother, feels fancy, almost like Alcantara. And then here you got a like a scratchy fabric type. And also just a major difference internally. This kind of has a mold for you to stick your earphones in, your headphones in there. Then on here, it's basically just empty. And they just guide you how to put it in there and they got some nice mesh up top here to, to rest it in. Very simple differences. So let's continue on. Normal. Transparency. Noise canceling. Hey guys, this is Mike from EE Tech Reviews. I'm currently in a very low noise environment, around 50 to 60 dBs. And this is currently how I sound. There's two mics, as well as AI for noise canceling technology, which is one of the benefits over of the regular Soundcore Q30s. Hey guys, this is Mike from EE Tech Reviews. I'm currently in a 90 plus dB environment. Trying out the Q35 Q microphone with the AI noise reduction. I'm speaking a little bit more loudly than usual, but I'm hoping I'll still come in clear. Now, something that I think is very important, guys, is to go over what the status is for all these Bluetooth codecs. You hear the phrases and the symbols for high res audio, you hear the symbol for wireless high res audio, and what does that really mean? Long story short, if you do want a video going over in depth how the science works for sampling and digital signal processing and how audio is being played and how it's being captured and how devices work and how they transmit these, let me know in the comments. We can actually make a whole video on that. But a quick way to summarize it is that if you want high res audio, every single item along the chain of the data transmission needs to be capable of transmitting and or accepting that higher bit rate. How much data can be sent instantly to your headphones. So the first thing is, it doesn't matter what the codec is. It doesn't matter if it's LDAC, SBC, AAC, APTX. You have to have a high res file. Again, you can find those online. You also have to have the proper app that can play the file. Just because you have a high res file in Google Drive, doesn't mean it's going to play an output from the app at that high res playback. Interesting point. The point with the codex here, with this chart that they're showing, the idea is, is that LDAC, which these headphones support, it's a huge feature. If you're an audiophile, it's fantastic. It allows very high data rate transmissions, meaning any file that you have that's high res audio, LDAC will be able to cover it and play it. No problem. You can see it's bit rate, right? around 990 kilobits per second. So very, very nice. Compared to AAC, which is the standard for iOS, it's almost four times more data. But again, you need a file with four times more data if you wanna play that file using LDAC to its full capacity. So we covered it in the chain, but the question still arises. Well, what do I need to officially play these high res files? We'll go down the chain. One. You're going to need a device, either Android or iOS. Android's quick. You go right into the settings for developer settings, and you can actually set, once you connect to these headphones, set it to LDAC for your Bluetooth codec. It's down in the developer settings somewhere lower. So you need the high-risk file, your phone in LDAC mode, connected to your Bluetooth headphones here. Then you're going to need an app that can either play it. So Tidal, some of those subscription services have audio at high-res. 
where you need an app that's capable of storing high-res audio and you can load your files there. Now, as it sends that file out, eventually it's going to hit a DAC, something doing digital to analog conversion or even an amp that's going to send the data from your phone, process that audio file, and send it wirelessly right to your headphones. LDAC, it's going to be built in on Android if it has that setting and it'll auto send it directly to those headphones. Pretty simple, not a big deal. iOS, everything gets a little bit more difficult. Let's say you have Tidal, the app. You play your high-res file. If you go through that little adapter that comes with your headphones, the lightning to three and a half millimeter, and then aux cord that right to your headphones, you're not getting LDAC. That adapter is going to bypass the chip that does the actual conversion and make sure that that high rate transfer is actually being used. It's going to skip that. It uses AAC as default. Now what you can do, and I have the links to these items in the description, you need something that has a higher codec DAC. So the Dragonfly ones that you see there, you're going to need to connect that in between your iOS device and your headphones. So what it's going to do is that high res file is going to be directly transferred into that DAC that you bought. And then that's going to confirm and make sure that before it hits your headphones, it's in the proper codec. So you're going to see that from these pictures, you need to have that USB adapter from lightning to USB, physically then plug in that DAC to the USB port. And then from there, it should go to your headphones. And that's how you get the high res experience wired. Now, if you want wireless, it's the same thing, except instead of the adapter and a wire, you just need an LDAC Bluetooth device. And I put another one in there in the description for wireless. So that high res file gets transferred directly over using Bluetooth 5.0, if you want to have those higher rates, right into that DAC. And then that's going to confirm and make sure it's the right protocol when it then sends it to your headphones. Do I think this is an important major feature upgrade? I think it is. But I also think it's difficult because not a lot of people, one, can hear the difference between high-res files, and two, it, it might cost some extra money if you don't have an Android device, and it might not be worth it to go through that extra hassle. But that's all I got to say on this. Guys, again, let me know if this was helpful to you, and if you want to hear more information maybe behind the science of the digital signal processing that's going on behind the scenes. As always, guys, let's get to the electrical engineer's overall score. This is an increase. It's definitely a better overall product from the original Q30s. I'm going to give it a 4.31 out of 5 compared to a 3.97 previously. Quickly, price. It's a solid price. You're getting very, very high quality audio capability compared to a lot of other headphones with some nice premium features. Again, all for around $130. That's still a lot less expensive than those XM4s or the Bose 700s, etc. Build quality, it's about the same as it was. They slightly increased the quality of the padding, which I think had a big effect, so that was slightly higher. Value, I'm going to lower it a little bit. I think the original Q30s at, at around already $80 pack a lot of features except for the higher audio quality, which a lot of people probably won't even utilize. Traveling, the better Comfort on the ear cups, I think is pretty useful. So I'm going to say your traveling is going to be a little bit better because your noise canceling is going to be slightly better, in my opinion. Gaming, not much of a change, but that additional aux cord with a built-in mic will make gaming a little bit better. Audio quality, if you follow the right procedure to play high-quality audio files, either using LDAC directly from an Android or going through using that digital to analog amplifier that you want to add definitely gives you a premium quality listening experience if you're an audiophile noise canceling i said slightly better but very very close it's about the same battery is the same the app's the same i think the new color and the additional features along with the ability to auto pause while taking it off definitely an increase there i think it's a little bit better so overall i'm going to say great noise canceling it's enhanced comfort upgraded audio quality if you figure out how to actually do it. And it's a solid feature set upgrade for an already great pair of headphones. And personally, it's up to you if you think that the extra 50 bucks is worth it. My recommendation is, what is your use case? Are you gonna be listening to 
super high quality audio files. Maybe you have a subscription to Tidal. Are you willing to pay if you have iOS to get an adapter and then get an amplifier or to get a wireless amplifier that's capable of LDAC? That's up to you. I know a lot of people can't hear a difference between high res quality audio and not, but for $50 for that ability, plus the auto pause, the slightly better mic quality, I think it's a worthwhile upgrade from the already the Q30s. And I use it every day. I think having any upgraded features on something that you're using daily is important. And I think they really nailed it. And I'm looking forward to some more items in the future. Now, just a quick negative. In general, very, very slight. When you look at the actual controls and where they have the labels on the controls here, it's like this very thin printed material. And over time, as you rub it and keep turning it on and off, it's eventually going to wear out. So other than that, I've had the Life Q30s, worn them every day since I've got them for months. No real issues. The audio quality is just as good. The noise canceling is just as good. No real issues with that. So their durability is also very good. And I think that's an important feature also to add. But that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps you to make your purchasing decisions and hopefully can help you to set up LDAC or any of those higher bit rate transmissions that you want to use with Bluetooth, whether it's wireless or wired. And let me know if there's anything else you want me to review and even give me recommendations for products or things that I can do to make my reviews better. So appreciate it, guys. I'm Mike, and thanks for watching on EE Tech Reviews, and see you next time.